in my last video, I showed that for a reaction, you know, there could be complicated mechanisms, and as a result, you have many steps. So your overall rate expression might be really complicated because you have many different possible intermediates or uh, other components. Um, but fortunately, there is a way to uh, you know, get an overall rate law, especially if you have very different rate constants of each elementary step, which is often the case. So you often you'll have what's called a rate determining step. So what I mean by that is, so if we have it reactant A, that converts to B, that converts to C. A simple two-step reaction. K1, here's our K2. So just like before, um, we can derive our, our relative overall rates with these elementary steps because we know the stoichiometry of the elementary steps. So what we say is that, let's say, negative dA dt is going to be equal to k1 of a db dt equals k1 of a minus k2 of b. And dc dt equals k2 of b. OK. So if we convert these into integrated rate expressions, we can do that. So for the first one, it should be easy. We know that concentration of A at times T should be equal to our initial concentration of A times E to the negative K1 T. Right? So that's simple enough. So we know our initial concentration of A, and that's what we put into the reaction. So we know how A over time should go. Uh, Compound, or for B, it's a little bit more complicated because now we have two first order rate expressions that will contribute to B. Um, so without showing the math, I'm just going to give you the answer. You probably know math way better than I do. So, but the concentration of B over time is going to be equal to, let's see, K1, the initial concentration of A, over K2 minus K1 times e to the negative k1t minus e to the negative k2t. Okay. So this is because right we have two things. Uh, B is being formed first order from A, and then it's being consumed second order. Okay. Or sorry, not second order. First order in B, sorry. First order. That's why it's the exponential. All right. And then lastly, we have C over t. So we could integrate this and exp express this as e to the negative uh, to b concentration of b additional concentrations e to the negative k2t, but b is an intermediate. So let me put as a note rate expression or for the final rate expression can never include an intermediate. Because in principle, your intermediates you should be able to solve for in terms of your reactants and your products. So you should only ever have rate expressions, your final rate law, in terms of yeah, reactants and products, never intermediates. So keep that in mind. That's why here we didn't just you know, solve A0 e to the minus k1t minus B0 e to the minus k2t, right? Because we don't have an initial B0. We don't know it. So it's not very useful for you if you're doing math. So regardless, so if we solve for B, which we know from this, we'll plug this in into our expression and then solve for the first order uh, reaction of dc dt. And therefore, we can then get out that it should be equal to a naught. So we'll get, see, we'll get an expression in terms of a, even though we have it from b, because we can plug uh, you know, different expressions into this final expression here. So it's a0 minus a0 over k2 minus k1 okay don't worry I will not make you like memorize these equations or solve very difficult differential equations but I'm here using this to illustrate a point so one point which is this one don't include concentrations of B so here we have our final concentrations in uh, of DC DT, or concentration of C is going to be in terms of A0 and K1 and K2. So we can have 
our expression in terms of the rate constants of our elementary steps, that's OK, because we could model that later. We just can't do it in terms of b. So this is our kind of final thing. And so this, these are our overall rate, integrated rate laws, which is great. But I do want to point out, what happens if we change k, the relative ratios of k1 and k2? So I'm going to have to try to draw this. I kind of excited it a little too far. But so if, let's say for the first one, if k1 is much, much less than k2, so this is in green. So this, if k1 is very less, then this will be really slow. a to b is slow, and then k2 will be fast, right? That's what those relative rate constants would mean. So if our slow step is that first step. So then we can look at our final concentration of c. What we'll get out is that c over time is going to be equal to, right? So we still have a 0. So this is going to be the same. And then if, so k2 is much, much bigger than k1. So this difference will be approximately k2. So this will be minus a0 over k2, right? So this is k2 is great, much greater than k1. And then we'll multiply this by that same expression, k2. Keep in mind that I can only do this approximation if it's in the denominator. Um, well, I guess you can do the numerator too. So, well, regardless, the here's okay. Keep okay. Watch out for uh, big number, little number approximations. So, our approximation here is that in the denominator, k two k two minus k one is approximately k two. That's our current first approximation here. And then, as a result, we can then cross out k two, and then what we'll end up getting is that c over time equals a naught. A not uh, blah, 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 blah. e to the negative k one t minus k one over k two e to the negative k two t. Hopefully this isn't cut off. Oh, it's, it's sort of cut off. Okay, so here k one over k two. We said that k two is very very much bigger than k one. So if you think about it, k one over k two is going to be approximately zero because let's say one over hundred is approximately 0. So we'll cross this out. And then therefore, our final rate expression, or our integrated rate law, rather, for C equals e to the negative k1t. So here's our integrated rate law of C. And what you'll notice is this expression is very, very similar to our expression from just the first order decay of A. So I'll kind of box this here. Right, these two are very similar. So this would be equivalent of having, if you just had like a, a one, one step reaction where you went from A to C with a reaction constant, a rate constant of K1. So basically, the slow step here is dominating. Slow step dominates. Right? So our reaction, our formation of C is only dependent on K1 and not at all on K2. So the first step is slow and the second step is fast. All you see is the first step. Hopefully that makes sense to you, right? I go slowly, A maybe goes to B, and then B goes to C really quickly. So basically, as soon as you form B, it's going to go to C, and that's why the rate, overall rate law of C is still only first order in A. OK, great. Our second scenario for this kind of simplified uh, example draw a line here. If, on the other hand, k2 is less than less than k1, so this is going to be a, b, c, right? So this will, this will now be the slow step, and this will be the fast step. You can do the same approximations. I'll just route the answer. Uh, what you get out is that c over time equals uh, a0 minus a0 e to the negative k2t. So now you can see that our rate law is dependent only on k2t, again, in a first order reaction. But now we have just like we saw that our a, a0s at the beginning. So again, slow step dominates.
So this is kind of the overall takeaway point. So you don't need to worry about all this math. The slow step really influences your overall rate law. Um, I'll point out that obviously we have more complicated mechanisms coming up, which we'll talk about uh, starting Wednesday with a video on Monday. Uh, but this is kind of just the overall, what I want you to know from, I guess, Monday's class.